everybody. Thank you for uh, taking part in this uh, roundtable that deals with cloud-based uh, transformation as a uh, an enabler of resilience. So we have the opportunity of having uh, Nicola Denis. Uh, perhaps you can tell us a few words about yourself. Hello, everybody. Nicola Denis. I am the operations director, IT director for uh, Servier Group. So the Servier Group is a pharmaceutical, French pharmaceutical uh, company that employs nearly 23,000 people that operates in uh, 153 countries world, worldwide. So I'm very happy to be with you today. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, there's also Frédéric Doua. Uh, so my name is Frédéric uh, Garnier. I'm uh, part of the cloud uh, transformation team in uh, Pricewaterhouse. And I work with Nicholas for their uh, transformation. So perhaps we can uh, shed a light uh, on the why, uh, how, and how it can contribute to greater resilience. Henry? Yes, my name is Henri Chavoyer. Uh, I'm an associate uh, partner in uh, PwC for France and UK in charge of uh, cloud-based transformation and uh, chief architect in Europe. So I'm in charge of end-to-end uh, -end, uh, architecture. And the topic of today will deal with, uh, will consider how uh, cloud-based transformation can generate resilience. Uh, my name is uh, Julien Mulier. I'm the director of PwC in charge of uh, resilience, uh, economic intelligence, uh, security. I guide uh, clients in their transformation project uh, with everything that deals with uh, resilience. So we're going to address uh, with all of you today the question of resilience in a wide, broad uh, manner and uh, determine and see how cloud-based transformation can trigger, generate uh, resilience. So before we get your feedback, input, and testimony on a transformation project, so if we go back quickly on the question of resilience, so resilience is a, a bit of a buzzword. We've been hearing it uh, a lot uh, recently, especially with the COVID crisis and its consequences. Of course, in PwC, we conduct uh, studies and surveys, and recently we've conducted one on various, uh, some on various subjects, and, and we realized that resilience is really at the heart of companies' preoccupations, whether it's highlighted in specific studies uh, on crisis management. And we realized that with the managing the COVID crisis, companies seek to uh, strengthen their resilience. So either they took advantage of the COVID crisis to, to put uh, certain actions in place or start started uh, thinking about it. We also see the importance of resilience in our studies that are more cyber oriented, where we also get uh, testimonies from companies that um, that uh, upgrade their security approach to have a more uh, global approach and again in order to uh, strengthen resilience so this is what our latest uh, studies have shown uh, and namely in terms of how they stead test uh, their systems with much more uh, demanding uh, testing to uh, really evaluate their end-to-end -end, uh, resilience. So it's really at the heart of uh, lots of preoccupations. We hear it a lot, not only in companies. Uh, you can just uh, Google the word resilience to realize for yourself that uh, it, uh, it is a topic that has uh, multiple dimensions. We can speak about human uh, resilience, uh, organizational, operational resilience, and the definition can change every time. So our definition of uh, resilience, it's more the capacity of an organization to foresee that's the first point to foresee things, to adapt, persevere, and uh, thrive in order to face disruptions in its environment. So the idea is to prepare for various situations. And we're going to give you more details about that with cloud-based transformation in order to be able to survive a crisis, not just survive 
period, we're talking more than robustness here. We're not talking just about taking a blow and moving on, but more about strengthening your capacities, capabilities, uh, being more agile and coming out of crisis uh, stronger and better. And cloud-based transformation is a perfect example of that. So I was saying resi resilience is a vast uh, subject and what we see in our transformation uh, programs around resilience is that it is an addition of capabilities that companies have to face all sorts of disruptions, whether small incidents or major crises. So to survive, learn, and get out stronger. So when we speak about capacities, we're talking about uh, human resources. That mean the capacity to ensure the resilience of the employees working for the organization. We also speak about resilience of technology and data. We will tell you more about that uh, when we address uh, cloud-based transformation, resilience of uh, infrastructures and equipment. And again, cloud-based transformation can have an impact on that. But beyond that, it's it's also uh, the resilience not just of the organization but also of the different stakeholders around it because very often companies work across so it's not only within the scope of the company but also we need to involve other people outside the, and around the companies and also of course we must not forget the financial resilience so that they have the cash flow to keep operating so we're not going to cover everything today of course it's too vast but more uh, focus on the areas where cloud-based transformation can help generate greater resilience so henry i'm going to give you the floor to get things started thank you julien so effectively each word is important when we speak about uh, cloud-based transformation. So first there's the word uh, transformation and uh, the word cloud uh, as well. So if we look at cloud-based transformation, resilience will be beneficial. Uh, it's not necessarily the primary purpose because it's more often financial uh, motivations and resilience can have a high cost, but uh, in the next minute, we're going to look into it in more detail. So first of all, let's define what the cloud is. So there are many points of views here, but uh, our point of view uh, coming from uh, various operations, uh, pragmatism, actual operations. So there are three uh, pillars, if you, if I may say so. One is about infrastructure uh, connectivity. So that's the technical foundation of everything, regardless of the purchasing mode, whether data center, SAS, PAS, uh, you will see that everywhere. Then comes uh, the more software-based uh, area which is quite significant. So not everybody plays in the same league in terms of resilience, and we're going to zoom in on that a little bit more. But from a software point of view, there's a great, really greater complexity here to understand what what you have in terms of data, in terms of software, what has been rolled out. So we're going to look into it more. And the third part, which is also very significant that we tend to forget, is the organization, the people, people who will deliver the transformation. And uh, if we look at a cloud part, people who will uh, manage the, the run and keep the different platforms uh, running. So from a cloud point of view, depending on the size of the company, uh, sometimes they will use uh, different types of solution, multi-cloud solution, hybrid solutions that depend on legal constraints, size, uh, size of the company. So there's other uh, complexity here and and we need really to cover these three areas but really not in silo mode okay they need to to work across and then if we look at the risks well of course there's the risk of a technical breakdown so this is not a major issue per se because this has already been sectorized and we have already uh, a wide array of solutions to solve these issues. From a cyber point of view, it's much more complicated in terms of impact and there are really multiple layers and that's where you have silos and we need really to break down the silo effect and then try to achieve resilience there. If we look at uh, performance, again, it's a bit more complicated because it's uh, not uh, something uh, uniform, but we need to have the all three areas work with one another. 
So an important keyword here is uh, the notion of transformation. So we've been transforming for the last 20 years now, roughly, and there's been a lot of transformation that dealt with uh, digital transformation made uh, meant to improve uh, customer experience, whether via websites, applications. So this, of course, is extremely important, but it doesn't change the anatomy of the, the system. Then we have uh, transformation projects that optimize uh, back office supply chain. So again, we improve performance with more, with smoother process, with greater supervision, monitoring. But then again, there's no in-depth transformation uh, or in-depth change. Then there's another aspect that's been uh, accelerated by the COVID uh, crisis. If we look at companies that already use lots of application with an extensive IT park, and uh, connections with the digital ecosystems, whether with uh, clients, uh, key accounts, suppliers, we realize there that there's a real, uh, a very significant need of integration and, and uh, the cloud is the best and most natural environment to exchange uh, in a secure way and get out of your um, in-house uh, IT system. And that's where the COVID has, uh, accelerated things a lot across several countries to uh, have uh, much more integration. And there's really two things here, two tables here. So a new business model where you aggregate uh, departments and services. There are many examples we can give in the industry um, and uh, in the different sectors or or be aggregated in other value chains uh, so really this is a, a vertical part where there's a lot of fundamental change going because this needs to be done in a, an automated manner and digitize uh, as much as possible and that's where cloud giant uh, have done it uh, in a very native and natural way to automate everything to be very iterative and this is a bit of a cloud revolution that is happening everywhere and in terms of resilience uh, it's not about you know we deliver a project it's over we move on no it's a permanent thing where we constantly try to to use the latest version and you need really to keep up the pace and progression then that makes uh, things very dynamic in the end so that's what I can say about transformation. So the role of cloud in transformation, what companies seek to achieve is uh, innovation. So you don't no longer need to do it at home. You can uh, get it externally with uh, robotics platforms. So this is one subset, but there are many uh, innovation opportunities to, to cash in on. And there are many bricks that are already highly resilient that you can get from various providers, whether service platforms or software companies. So we've really uh, ramped up, uh, stepped up things uh, one notch. And uh, one other very important point and something we've well understood and seen there's a parallel movement with the cloud as we try to get uh, as much automation as possible, but keeping our agility and industrialization. So there are lots of software programs that have been designed for this trend. Uh, so of course, if you just use it at this level, you've gained a bit of resilience from a technical point of view, but not necessarily from an operational point of view. So again, we're going to zoom in on that quickly a bit later. So the first area that I like to speak about in uh, terms of infrastructure and connectivity is on the left hand side of the slide. It's the starting point, uh, traditional data centers. So a bit of a centralized organization and cloud consumption that uh, already exists. And uh, by nature, uh, teams have to move fast and uh, in all good faith will uh, buy things on the cloud in order to speed things up and achieve their objectives. Like, likewise, from an SAS point of view, we're going to use the services of a, a company uh, that offer this or that uh, service. You already know some of them. Whether So there are lots of software programs that can be used uh, for this and we're going to use them anyway. So we're already using uh, more or less hybrid solutions, generally speaking. And uh, well, 
at COVID level, the impact we've seen, the mechanical impact is that everything had been designed to interact with uh, customers and clients, but not necessarily with employees. And all of a the sudden, they ended up being uh, in the wrong place or not the way it was planned. So the, to remedy that, uh, we used additional cloud solutions to optimize traffic and fluidify it. And again, it's very natural solutions because the environment of the company is quite well known. And uh, there was also what I told you about earlier in terms of a digital ecosystem where we had to move uh, faster, further to keep operations running and we needed more interconnectivity. We needed to work across uh, digitally with suppliers to go faster. So so there, this impact from the COVID uh, exists. And what happened naturally is that the cloud became kind of a, a resilient pivot and has not been put in opposition to other solutions, but lots of services have quite moved. And I'm very happy to be here with you physically. And it's kind of a, a premiere because everything we've been doing was done remotely via VC, etc. cetera. And, um, and these uh, ha became uh, a central uh, element for resilience uh, uh, and uh, so yesterday I was uh, at the hotel and uh, um, like hotel phones, for example, we don't use them anymore. So we see that technology is evolving and the use of it is not only personal, but also professional uh, across a company on a wide scale. So this is one key aspect from a uh, infrastructure and connectivity point of view. The second aspect is uh, quite complicated to, to deal with. It's on the IT uh elements components of resilience so what i said for infrastructure connectivity it's a bit hard to have a, a an accurate inventory of everything what versions we use of what uh, application and uh, at infrastructure level it's it's easy of course you always have uh, glitches and emergency but it's feasible at, at it level the challenge is much more complicated and we realize that uh, both uh, aspects are sort of merging into one uh, a lot of it is interconnected with infrastructures and inversely and we can think also about iot and lots of things have sort of added up uh, to it so the only way to solve this technically and this is uh, it's all this uh, industrialization uh, where all the bricks well, it's not really the agile methods, but more the iterative methods so we can roll out something and not as a big monolith, but more as a scalable and customizable uh, way. And, it, it, and, and they have been designed for this huh, by uh, tech uh, giants to really be able to um, industrialize, deploy, uh, roll out functionalities, whether geographically or functionally, and in a, in a scalable manner to uh, to maintain and, and achieve resilience uh, in a in a more or less flexible way and, and this is what happens with a lot of company that use a lot of monolithic solutions and they lack this flexibility and therefore resilience so that's what i can say about the it part of things so the only way to do things well is to automate as much as possible and when you think about the cloud it's already digitized and uh, automated so so one purpose of, of transformation is uh, automation and this is something that is uh, effectively a, a never-ending process and resilience means that every week uh, new projects are going to be launched uh, they will need to be optimized but in the cloud you no longer truly master your infrastructure your software base and there will always be new versions from cloud providers uh, that will be cheaper so there's also the financial aspect of things so it's it goes beyond the information systems you need to realize that you buy a service and no longer only hardware or products and and when you purchase services you don't buy a service only once you you buy them in an iterative way and that allows uh, continuous optimization opportunities and this means the challenge is we need on a weekly basis to be able to reassess the needs and uh, uh, and uh, for that of course all the cyber part uh, must be uh, well adapted for that and uh, lots of providers uh, 
uh, work on that, but you need to be able to put it all together. And the last component, which is the organizational aspect of things, so there are several things to be to be said, is first of all, you see the pyramid on the left-hand side, which is really a sequential process, uh, top-down strategies, uh, and... Uh, and this works uh, less and less because now we're more and more iterative and recurrent so at strategy level you need to adapt the company strategy to the abundance of technology uh, that uh, has an influence and especially at transformation level if you want to use more connected solutions uh, it's great but management needs to be fully aware of it and uh, and then there are two levels on the pyramid in the pyramid uh, one at our architect level so we're going to put technologies uh, together but for that we need to be able to understand uh, everything we do the solutions we use multi-cloud solution so this generates greater complexity and the architect in his role as an architect uh, is going to uh, use the best solution not only from a technical standpoint but also from a financial standpoint uh, regardless of the department you work with and the last uh, the last role is uh, the delivery so that's where you need to really constantly master delivery and optimize week after week and have the best possible optimization across everything so that's it. So I'm not uh, going to do a recap, but in a nutshell, with the move to cloud, w you have uh, uh, several benefits, greater resilience, it's much more modular, you purchase uh, services and it forces you to be highly recurrent and iterative, which is a great point because this allows you to redeploy, for example, if you lose a backup or okay uh, sometimes it can be complicated uh, outside the cloud but on the cloud you're in an ideal position where you can redeploy a whole application a whole system very quickly so taking into account all these aspects so i'm not going to do a read through but that's that's the idea but perhaps i've already spoken too much no it's perfect uh, it's perfect great explanation so we are more operational people so that means implementing carrying out the strategy and there are two points that really come out clearly the first one is that when you commit to a transformation cloud-based transformation processes you're not really resilience oriented and the second point is that you end up uh, achieving greater resilience uh, anyway so uh, Nicola, in uh, at, in uh, Servier, the, the aim, the initial goal of transformation is not necessarily the purpose, not to achieve greater resilience. But what what can you say about that? So uh, I've been working for Servier for three years now, and uh, and we have a, a real uh, technological debt in Servier. We're a bit backward. Uh, we do a lot of things uh, homemade, a bit DIY and uh, although Servier uh, works a lot internally and the uh, culture of service is quite low in uh, Servier and when I joined them I came from a, a luxury group where things were uh, very different and there were already certain convictions and the first one is that I don't think that a, a group like uh, Servier has the same strike force as the big uh, cloud uh, giants uh, so there there are and it, it's not our core business and my IT teams are not really good at, or passionate at this so so we don't have a great uh, investment capacity like uh, other tech giants so that's the first tech is this is not something we can do very well internally and there are the second point is that there are great existing services on the on the, on the market everybody uses services uh, in their everyday life uh, hiring a taxi renting a bicycle or whatever and uh, at some point so you buy services in your daily life so why wouldn't companies do the same and there are market ready solutions that exist that are really uh, up to grade and we have come to a point where everybody goes digital uh, data etc but it's not something you're going to build yourself and you're not going to build the machines yourself even though we do medical research we still need to buy services that we cannot develop ourselves but it's true that the resilience was not the initial purpose of our transformation it's more like a collateral benefit 
um, if I take a technological example, uh, for example, my teams had uh, DRP systems everywhere because we're in the, a pharmaceutical uh, company. We need to manufacture medicine, deliver them. This is no longer an issue. Uh, it's it's just a basic service, and I trigger it whenever I need it. But it's it reveals what we were able to do yesterday and what, where we are, where we stand today. Is that is that a satisfactory response? I knew the question would come, but he didn't know I would answer that. No, but it it relates to one of the slides that uh, Henry showed us to, to show that if you engage in transformation, there are several levers you can pull, and they are critical for the company. And the, the one on the left-hand side of uh, the previous slide was to be able to access the services available by clouds, analytics, AI, potentially cybersecurity. So that was the idea, uh, the, the, the purpose of uh, Servier initially. So today we can see that companies use the cloud uh, to stay resilient throughout the crisis and adapt to the new ways of working of employees. And so how did uh, Servier live this experience? So it's only been a year and a half, so it's not that long when you think about it, but uh, but I think I'm not alone in this room to to have uh, to end up uh, overnight uh, with all company employees, so 23,000 people worldwide who were no longer able to work and who were trying just to, to manage, and this happened overnight. And just like many companies, we were not ready, so uh, so we started using VPN left and right, people not able to connect, uh, saturated bandwidth, we had to prioritize. So it was a bit of a mess and we did something very simple. And uh, we used something that were, was already in the boxes, but were ready to use. And in, in a, a few days, less than a week, we started using cloud services that allowed us to restart and get everybody back to work. So that was the first example. So it allowed us to continue to manufacture medicine, which is our uh, core business, our trade and our obligation. The second point related to the COVID crisis is we also do medical visits. And this uh, has been completely changed because it's no longer something, so visiting doctors is not something we do physically anymore. It disappeared again overnight, and and uh, we have market solutions that we use that are well known to do our medical uh, visits. Uh, I wouldn't say within a few hours, but very quickly we started doing remote medical visits, and we use the same solutions today. When you go see your doctor and you do a remote consultation, we've all experienced that, so remote consultation is something in France that we didn't even imagine just a while ago and now it's becoming a norm um, and so these are solutions that we have started to use overnight in a context that we didn't imagine Yes, I mean, uh, resilience by default uh, with the cloud. So just to close, because we're getting to our 45 minutes now, as uh, operation uh, manager, if we had to go through a transformation by the cloud, what would be your recommendations? I'm going to tell you how we did it. No, 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 no. Uh, we were well structured. The difficulties today, because we're still facing some, I mean, it's first of all, the change, the change for the teams, the change uh, in the way of working. It's the uh, loss of control somewhat of what uh, is happening because we've got the good aspect of things because these solutions uh, 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 ch change quickly. But I mean, the train is also a, a fast train. So we've kept this uh, motion. So the first difficulty is uh, a human one uh, support uh, to the staff. I didn't do that to make money, uh, to reduce the teams, uh, quite the contrary, to put my company in a mode, uh, in a service mode. So I haven't reduced my teams and I'm quite proud of that. First difficulty. Uh, after all that, I mean, you've, uh, you, there's technology behind it, okay? Cloud is great. I mean, we use network. 
when everybody's at work, I mean, that's okay. If you had a box, I mean, it worked. I mean, there are still constraints which are uh, technological ones to still now to use the cloud. And now the last one, last point is to be able to position yourself uh, regularly in front of all this because, I mean, there's a tend to uh, overuse the cloud quite quickly. So from a, an economic standpoint, it's quite dangerous. So always bear in mind that and, and, and challenge yourself permanently on what you use, how and when. And if it does fit, I mean, don't uh, get into an overconsumption mode that we could uh, use, but be careful of uh, what you want to do, what you use and why you're using it. And uh, that's the challenge and transformation is in, we're in uh, the heights of it. I mean, uh, we've been doing it for three years. I, uh, for five years, we're going to be able to meet that. But I mean, it's a big field to take on, uh, specific, specifically if you're present in 150 countries. Thanks, Nicholas. Yes, thanks, Nicholas, for this uh, feedback on experience and Frédéric for your uh, 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 participation on that. I mean, a few minutes. I mean, the audience, do you have any uh, any questions about transformation using the clouds, L using the cloud as a element of resilience? First one is always the toughest. Yes, hi, thanks for the presentation. We talked about uh, resilience through cloud, but what about the resilience of the cloud suppliers themselves? Well, yes, I mean, it implies to uh, outside, to, to uh, uh, externalize a part of your, uh, of that to your suppliers. I mean, there might be incidents uh, outsourcing that, but uh, it's their job to be resilient. But I mean, there's uh, the green IT part also, which is important. I mean, it goes together hand in hand. Their purpose is optimize the uh, operational side to be more efficient, maybe, uh, or cheaper uh, for the company uh, bottom line. So that's, uh, and the green IT, I mean, uh, it's in their interest because it's the, their energy uh, in uh, bill, which is at stake. So what I was talking about before, I mean, the companies must aggregate all these services and that's where resilience and the scope of resilience for the company is going to be important. And the importance to have the right people. There are a few cases that we know I mean, a uh, uh, few people have got uh, the technological skill, and uh, if you don't have that person, it's going to be able to be uh, difficult to coordinate all that. Uh, Business-wise, it's going to be better and better. I mean, I mean, obviously, we've got uh, incidents at first. I mean, whether it is connectivity or data center, I mean, we've got a few examples throughout the world. So. Um, but uh, things are improving and uh, and uh, people are improving and it's their business. It's something uh, which uh, is very expensive to do if you're doing it on your own by yourself in your company. The multi-cloud is almost de facto something that you've got to uh, promote wherever you want. We might have one primary uh, act uh, player in your company and then you should have a, a backup, a follower and play the card of the uh, financial element between the suppliers. I mean, that's something that you've got to use in your transformation strategy. Two parts here. I mean, the uh, um, service supplier and the service uh, client. So uh, purchasing the services, I mean, you've got to first of all be very aware of what you actually need it in terms of resilience. I mean, what you expect depending on each department. I mean, you've got to list what you need and have a level of service that matches that because I mean the services that we might buy might have offer different solutions different have different levels so uh, uh, 
you've got to have a clear uh, expression of your needs and to have the level of service subscription which is uh, uh, in adequation with what you actually need. So be careful about the service, the uh, uh, contract associated with this uh, service purchase and be careful of the uh, force majeure cases and the cases which are excluded. Uh, not to be surprised because uh, events will happen. So depending on the level of the service and the uh, contract uh, incidents, I mean, there are details, but you've got to pay attention to those, not to be surprised if uh, you come across a problem. Any other question maybe? Well, thank you very much for the audience to take part in this roundtable and uh, enjoy the rest of the day at the FIC. Thank you.